First, they came for the socialists. And I did not speak out, because I was not a socialist. Then, they came for the trade unionists. And I did not speak out, because I was not a trade unionist. They came for the Jews. And I did not speak out, because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. When you think about World War II and the Holocaust, you think about destruction, terror, and death. Although all of those things are true, there were times when people took a stand in history against these horrible events. People such as Meet Gies and Oskar Schindler are well known for helping Jews during the Holocaust. However, some rescue stories remain hidden for many years. This is one of those stories. One man, Roddy Edmonds, took such a powerful stand that changed the lives of 200 American Jewish soldiers. Roddy Edmonds was born August 20th, 1919 in Knoxville, Tennessee, a city located near the Great Smoky Mountains. In March of 1941, at the age of 21, Edmonds enlisted in the United States Army and he was quickly promoted to Master Sergeant. I think, I think he had a, um, a desire to serve the country. Uh, Dad, had, Dad had really four values that, that drove him, his faith, his family, his friends, and freedom. Um, and so he, I really do think he had a, a sense of a call of duty. In the period between the wars, anti-Semitism or prejudice against the Jews seemed like it was everywhere. For example, Henry Ford openly showed his distaste for Jews by publishing a series of negative newspaper articles about them and placing the newspapers in the seats of the cars he manufactured. President Roosevelt was not openly anti-Semitic, but he did make it harder for European Jewish refugees to enter the United States. Strict immigration quotas and economic concerns of the time influenced his decision. In Germany, anti-Semitism was much more severe. Some Germans thought the Jews were an inferior race, and some falsely believed there was a Jewish plan to take over the world. Many Germans also blamed the Jews for the loss of World War I and the economic problems Germany was facing at the time. With Nazi government approval, synagogues were being destroyed and burned down. The Germans forced the Jews into places called ghettos where they were kept until being deported to concentration and death camps. In the death camps, they were taken in groups to a place to shower, but they never came out alive because the showers were actually gas chambers. In 1941, an official policy was established called the Final Solution, which was a plan put in place to systematically kill all of the Jews. After being sent overseas, Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds was captured with the 422nd Infantry during the Battle of the Bulge in December 1944. Starving, lice-infested POWs were marched through the deep snow for four days to a train station where they were crammed into boxcars and driven to Slog 9B in Bad Orb, Germany. The living conditions were terrible there. Edmonds explained in his diary that they were, quote, fed once a day, broth with a tiny piece of black bread made with sawdust, unquote. In Stalag 9b, Jewish POWs were segregated, described by one POW as a prison within a prison. The Germans separated the Jewish POWs possibly as a way to weaken them and because they wanted to ultimately destroy the Jews. From this camp, about 350 soldiers, including American Jewish soldiers and anyone whose name sounded Jewish, were later sent to Berga, a slave labor camp where many did not survive. Prior to the separation, on January 25, 1945, Edmonds and others were transferred to Stalag 9A in Ziegenhain. Roddy Edmonds was the highest-ranking non-commissioned officer at Stalag 9A. One night, there was an announcement that stated, only the Jewish POWs were to fall out the next morning to be counted. Knowing this would mean disaster for his fellow soldiers who were Jewish, Edmonds ordered all 1,200 of his men to fall out the next morning, not just the Jews. When the German officer in charge, he was Major Siegmann, saw that all the camp's inmates standing in front of the barracks, he said, they cannot all be Jews. I remember standing by his side when Edmonds retorted, we are all Jews. Edmonds did not waver even when the German took out his pistol and threatened to shoot him. According to the Geneva Convention, said Edmonds, we have to give you only our name, rank, and serial number. If you shoot me, 
you will have to shoot all of us because we know who you are and after the war you will be tried for war crimes. The German finally gave up and left the scene. In that moment, Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds, a non-Jewish soldier from East Tennessee, took a stand in history, a stand for his American Jewish comrades for decency and humanity. And at the same time, he took a stand against anti-Semitism in its most evil form with the determination to help those who could not help themselves. According to Elaine Balkenhall of the Trutz Hay Museum and Memorial, we do not have any documents in evidence of why Major Siegmund reacted as he did. Knowing that the war was already lost, he might possibly have feared the personal consequences of his actions. However, POW testimonies explain that with further leadership by Edmonds, the American POW survived until the camp was liberated on March 30, 1945. Master Sergeant Edmonds saved so many lives. All of those 200 soldiers and their families and friends were so glad to still have them here with them. As a result of his actions, Edmonds received the Righteous Among the Nations Award, posthumously given to him by Yad Vashem in 2015. Yad Vashem is the World Holocaust Remembrance Center located in Israel. This special award is Israel's highest honor given to non-Jews. It has only been given to five Americans, and Edmonds is the first U.S. military man to receive the title. Special guests attended the ceremony, which included the U.S. President at the time, the Ambassador of Israel, the Chief Rabbi of Israel, and a well-known movie director to recognize Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds. He also received the Yehi Or Award, which means Let There Be Light, by the Jewish Foundation for the Righteous in New York. Edmonds has been nominated for the Congressional Medal of Honor and the Gold Medal of Honor. A few American Jewish soldiers who were saved by Edmund's brave stand are still alive today, and several others lived long lives into their 90s. Paul Stern was a medic during the war, and it was his testimony in part that resulted in the Righteous Among the Nations Award given to Edmunds. Another POW saved by Edmunds was Sidney Skip Friedman. After the war, Friedman went to college and became a lawyer. Ronnie was incredible. He never really got his recognition except among us. We were very lucky to have him with us. Sadly, both Paul Stern and Skip Friedman passed away during the making of this documentary. Sonny Fox became a TV show host for the children's show Wonderama. He also hosted several other TV shows for both children and adults. That such people can exist gives you hope, maybe, for humanity. Lester Tanner was another man in the World War II POW camps with Edmonds. Tanner is a New York lawyer. He even sold an apartment to former President Richard Nixon. Tanner has spoken at several ceremonies to share and tell the story of his experiences with the Holocaust and the time when his good friend Roddy Edmonds took a stand and did something great for this world in history. I, I never saw him again after, after that day. And, but, it was never out of my mind. I have to tell you, that experience and Roddy uh, was a defining experience in my life. Master Sergeant Edmonds passed away in 1985, but his legacy is so inspiring that his family and friends want to share his story with others in ways we can all be heroes too. One way they are doing this is through Roddy's Code, an organization that emphasizes the importance for all of us to take a stand and to be the hero. Roddy's Code explains that Edmonds lived by the words inspire, intercede, influence, and invest, words that we can all live by. He was a man of faith. He tried to be a man of God and live by what he was called to do. Edmonds believed that he was called to stand up and risk everything. If Roddy had not saved the 200 American Jewish soldiers, then all of their 2,000 descendants would not be here either, and students and adults would not have had the chance to learn about an amazing time in history and a true hero's stand and legacy that led to greatness.